Hi guys, welcome to my masterclass. My name is Jenny Alice. I'm a freelance videographer, photographer and editor based in the UK. I have a variety of work that I shoot from e-com to advertising, property to product and music videos and many more. So I'm just going to show you guys my show reels so you can get more of an idea of the kind of content that I shoot. You ain't seen nothing yet. Walk down my And if you want to check out any more of my other content, you can go over to my website, jennyalicefilms.com. And if you want to connect with me on my social media accounts, I'm really active on my Instagram, at jennyalicefilms, or any other social media accounts, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. So a little bit more about how I got into videography. I did it at university, film and TV production. I then went and did photography on a cruise ship around the world for a few years, and I went into marketing. I then realized that I really enjoyed video content creation, and I wanted to work for myself. So I left my full-time job and went fully freelance. Since then, I have a client base around the UK and I'm really excited for when I can start traveling around the world again and doing projects overseas. So today I'm going to be talking about the gear I'm currently using at the moment and why, how I plan and fulfill a brief. I'll take you guys on a shoot of me and then include my work style, my filming techniques and the way I shoot. And then finally, I'll give you guys some tips and tricks on filmmaking, running gun shooting, and working on corporate content. And if you guys have any questions for me, you can pop them in the chat below and I will answer them at the end. So moving on to what gear I'm using at the moment. My go-to camera to shoot on is a Panasonic S1H. I've been using this for all my recent shoots. The reason I love this camera so much is because it's designed with videographers in mind. It's a full frame mirrorless camera and it shoots in 6K res, 10 bit internal recording. It has vlog gamma, scopes, anamorphic support and numerous small details as a videographer I love. A bonus is it's still a 24 megapixel stills camera. And to give you guys an idea of the quality of the footage, here is some recent work I've filmed on the Panasonic S1H. For more details of the specs of this camera, you can head over to Wex Photography and you can check it all out on there. Other stuff I have in my bag. I have my Crane Free S and then I have my monitor. These are great for when you're out filming and you need to see more detail in the shots. I then have extra batteries because you can never have enough batteries when on location. Nanlite Pavo tubes, these are amazing. They're super easy to carry, really lightweight, and they have great battery life. I then have my extra SD cards. And then I have my XLR input for my Panasonic S1H, and basically I just use it to clip in all my boom mics or any mics I'm using when I'm shooting or on location. So I have my 20 for my wides, my 35 for my mids, my 50 for my close-ups. I then have the GoPro, which is for any behind the scenes shots that I'm using. And then I have my Lens Baby, which is a super quirky lens, which I'm gonna show you guys how I use on my shoot coming up. So the first thing that I did when I became a freelance videographer was create a showreel. And the way that I did this was I contacted my friends, local businesses, and I even turned up at a wedding, well, a few weddings for free with my friend who was a wedding photographer and offered my services. It was really important for me to show new clients what I was capable of filming. It's really hard for a client to believe and trust that you can film if you've got nothing to show them. So that was the first step that I did. Then I created a website so that clients had something to go to to see all of my work. And I started posting on my social media accounts, so like Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and so on. I found that using social media was a great way to let everyone know that I was working freelance. 
Because the thing is, how are people supposed to know unless you tell them? It's really easy to just assume that people already know and it's also really easy to feel a bit like you don't want to put your name out there, it can be a little bit scary and you can feel like imposter syndrome kind of setting in a little bit and I've been doing this for a while and I still get moments where I get imposter syndrome and I just really have to work through it. You know, don't be afraid to put yourself out there and to let people know that you are working. At the end of the day, it's really important for you to have a solid client base and the only way you're going to do that is by people knowing that you actually are working as a freelance videographer. It's also really important to not only have a strong reel, but to build strong relationships. And you can do this through social media and networking with people. Before the pandemic, I actually did go to face-to-face -face networking. Obviously at the moment, because of the pandemic and England's kind of half in lockdown at the moment, I do more like Zoom calls. I've joined groups such as Freelance Hair with other female creators in it. So there's still ways to connect with others, maybe just not face to face the way that we used to do it. Another point is that everyone has to start somewhere. And I just want to remind anyone watching this, if they see me in this big studio thinking, oh, it's easy for you to say you're in a studio now. Um, I had to start somewhere as well. You know, I worked with a secondhand camera beforehand. And it's just knowing that every single person who has got to where they are now had to start somewhere and we're all on our own journey and we're all at different points in our career and it's okay to be where you're at now, just don't give up and keep working at it. And it's kind of the same for doing this masterclass today. This is the first time that I've actually spoke to the camera before. I've done a few online things in the past, but this is the first time I've actually filmed myself, like kind of YouTube vlogger vibes. And this is the second time I'm filming this because the first time, I just wasn't happy with the edit, I wasn't happy with the way I spoke to the camera and I just kind of froze as soon as I put the record button on. So I just want to remind anyone watching this that we all have to start somewhere but the most important thing is to just keep working at it and don't give up. So another tip from me is to not be afraid of failure. I know it can seem scary but if you're too afraid of failure then you're literally never going to try anything new. Hi guys, I'm... What was I saying? Hi guys, welcome to... Hi guys, today we're here at Vessel Studios. <laughs> so we're going to be shooting Holly Love Lady's new single, Ariane, at Vessel Studios. One more time. We're not always going to be amazing at something new that we try. That literally just takes persistence and learning. I know for myself that when I look back at my old reels, I always want to improve. I always want to improve my camera techniques, my movements. Um, my style of filming, there's always room for improvement. So don't be afraid to fail, start somewhere. Something that I also find really important, not necessarily filming related, but it's about surrounding yourself with the right people. People that support you, motivate you, and remind you of what you're capable of. There will be times where you are going to doubt yourself. We're all human and we all go through these emotions and feelings. But the most important thing is that you have a tight circle around you that when you feel like you can't do something, they remind you that you're more than capable of succeeding. I also say community over competition. And I go by this all the time. I use my social media to connect with others and to build a community. On Instagram, I connect with other female creatives who are in the field of me. And it's amazing having someone that you can kind of speak to of anything that you're going through and you have something that's relatable, maybe you're struggling with a client or something like that, and you can just connect and talk about it. Another thing that really helps me, if I'm ever feeling unmotivated or uninspired, is going back to my why. Why did I become a freelance videographer? And one of the reasons why I became a freelance videographer was to help motivate and inspire others through my work. So it's really important to go back to your why. Why did you start creating content? And through my why, it reminds me when making this masterclass the reason why I'm doing it. And it's to help motivate and inspire others that are watching it. Maybe give you some tips and tricks that I've learned through the working in the field and through my own mistakes. <laughs> so hopefully you guys find this useful um, and I'm really excited to show you some content that hopefully you guys can learn a little bit from. Something that I find really important as well is to be grateful. And I know it can sound a little bit cheesy because I see the word thrown a lot around at the moment, especially on Instagram. But for me, it's really important each evening I actually write down three things that I'm grateful for and it just reminds me of the progress that I'm making and the people that I'm surrounding myself with. For example, I'm really grateful for the people I have in my life, I'm really grateful for the equipment I get to use, I'm really grateful for being able to do my full-time job in a career that I love 
and the list goes on. If you write down three things each evening, what you're grateful for, it will kind of change your mindset so you're constantly looking out throughout the day of things that you can write down at the end of the day. I know it sounds a little bit hippie-ish, but just even writing down what you're grateful for will keep you in a more positive mindset. It's very easy to feel overwhelmed and as if you're not actually getting anywhere and it's easy to forget about everything you already have. I like to think that even though I have all of this equipment at my hands, it was through a lot of hard work and attracting the right people and the right mindset to get there. I know through this career that we're all in, um, learning is really crucial and beneficial. I'm not trying to say that I know it all. I've learned a lot through my mistakes, but I know that I also have a lot to learn. So being grateful that I can create a masterclass and help you guys through some of the mistakes that I've learned so far and some tips and tricks on how you can avoid them and how you can maybe add them some notes to your own filming techniques. The first thing I'm going to talk about is how I fulfill a brief for a client. So one thing I just want to make really apparent is communication for this stage is super important. You want to get as much information from them so that you can create a clear vision for them from the brief. So how do I fulfill a brief? Well, as soon as anyone approaches me to do work, the first thing I ask them for is a brief. So this can just be a short description of what I'll be doing. And I get them to send me it in writing. The reason why I get them to send me it in writing is so that later on down the line, I have it for my pre-production, for my editing. But also, if anything changes, I can go back to the original brief, which is really great for you to have as a reference. So when I'm speaking to them and they send me the brief, the questions that I normally ask are things like, do they have a reference for any of the work? Do they have mood boards? And also, do they have an aesthetic for the video? You can also ask what their competitors are doing, if they're creating any content that maybe they like or anything about the content that they don't like. Through asking these questions, you can find things to avoid. After you have the brief, you can basically just break it down into your pre-production. So your pre-production is just going to be a breakdown of your brief. So you're just going to start with your script, your storyboard or a shot list, and then you're going to go on to location, cast and crew, lighting, equipment, so on. So once you get all that boxed off, you can then look at scheduling the time into your pre-production. Whenever I'm scheduling for a shoot, I always take into consideration not only how long it will take for me to shoot, but how long it will take for me to set up each scene. So for example, if a shot to say is 15 seconds long, it's probably gonna take me up to 30 minutes. So that will include such as lighting, uh, the talent makeup, even just changing the entire look and feel of the scene. It's really important for me to over schedule the time taken for each shot, just because if a shoot is supposed to take like a day and it takes say three quarters of a day instead, everyone's happy to go home early. <laughs> but if it's the latter and um, we end up shooting, say it's meant to be half a day and we end up shooting for the entire day because I have scheduled too short for each shot, everyone's going to have to stay behind. So moral of the story is give yourself slack, give yourself space for maybe errors, retakes, changing the set and so on. Don't cut yourself short trying to fit everything into half a day. Hi guys, today I'm going to bring you guys along with me on a behind the scenes as we shoot Holly Lovelady's Ariane's music video here at Vessel Studios. And I'm really excited to bring you guys along with us to have a little look at the behind the scenes and what we get up to. We collaborated with Holly for the look and feel of the video. So one half is going to be Holly the narrator telling the story and the other half is Holly the protagonist which is going to be a darker, moodier vibe with a lot more contrast and filters. So I have a pair of Nanlite Mix Panel 150s. I'm going to have them at a really high setting to create a nice even light. And then just to stop any light from escaping the set, I'm going to box it all in with some white polys on either side.
Then I'm going to put a key light on our subject. To light our subject, I'm going to use the Nanlite Forza 60. We want this to be as light and as soft as possible. So rather than using a direct source, I'm going to turn the light around and point it at a white reflector. This will give us a super soft light on Holly and also give her a nice highlight in her eyes. Pretty happy with how she looks. However, the last thing we need to do is add a hair light. Hair lights are great for pulling your subject away from the background. So to do this, I'm going to use another Forza 60, but this time with a Fresnel lens and a sheet of diff. This will soften it up just like all the other lighting. So the Panasonic S1H has really great crisp video quality. However, for this vibe, we want it to be a little bit softer. So I'm going to add a matte box and put some filters in just to create a bit more of a dreamy vibe for today's shoot. Now that's looking really nice for the camera. It has a dreamy vibe that we're going for. Like I said earlier, that's why it's so important to have a clear brief so that you can create the right look and feel for your client through lighting, lens choice, filters and so on. And that's our first setup complete. We're ready to roll the camera. The shutter angle is 180, the ISO is 200 and our aperture is 1.2. We are shooting 10 bit I at 400 megs per second. The white balance is set, you can see the highlights are not peaking and it's looking really nice. For me it really helps to shoot to edit. So before shooting I have a shot list of all the shots I needed and how I want them to look. This means in post it will be much quicker and won't end up taking too much unnecessary footage. Now that's complete, I'm going to move to our second setup. This is darker, moodier and with more contrast in colour and lens effects. Firstly, I'm going to flip everything around. I'm going to change the pastel backdrop to black. We're going to put a row of black poly on either side of our talent for negative film. This will stop any light bouncing back and give us a lovely contrast that we're looking for. I'm going to change the lighting as well. I'm starting with a key light using the single Nanlite mix panel and dialing the power down just to expose the subject's features. So now I'm going to add a bit of colour. So we're going to use two Nanlite Pavo tubes um, on either side and I'm going to put them onto a magic arm. These are super lightweight and easy to use on shoots. There we go, that's blue. And then we're going to put a contrast and colour on either side. To take quite a normal setup, we're going to kind of mix it up a little bit and create that surreal feel with my trusty box of lens filters. And I also have this. So this was actually out of some sunglasses. Uh, really cool, really cheap and really affordable. So don't let uh, price, you know, limit your creativity. Just things around the house and things on eBay are really cool. So yeah. For me, it's really important to create the right looks that you want when you're shooting on the day. Anyone can drop a filter or preset on Premiere Pro. The real art is creating the look straight out of camera. And for me, this allows me to be a lot more creative on set. Don't let the equipment stop you from learning. A lot of us get a lot more creative when we have to think outside the box. I also love an excuse to use a lens baby. I find if it's used for the right vibe, it can really change a somewhat boring shot to something really mesmerizing. And that's a wrap. Like I said earlier, it was so important to have a clear brief, have everything planned, so then I could create all the lights and the vibes I needed for the music video. He's shown his magic trick, now the curtain has come down. So sad before me.
So moving on to what equipment to use. It generally depends on what you're shooting on, but if you're just starting out, you're probably going to use your own equipment, rather than if you're shooting on higher end productions, you're probably going to have to rent out the equipment, as the equipment is normally a particular type of cine camera and lenses that they want for the production. Don't be afraid to ask any friends, colleagues, or anyone that you may know if you need to borrow any equipment, such as a mic or a certain lens. There's no point buying a lens if you're only going to use it once. So example for me, when I shot property videos, I actually lent a wide angle uh, lens first. I think it was like a 16 mm. Um, just because I wasn't sure if I actually wanted to invest like six or 700 pound in a lens if I was only going to shoot once. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to ask people and reach out to anyone that you may know, even in your local area. And that also moves on to using the right equipment for the job. Same to the property videos, I needed a wide angle lens for that job. I could have had the shiniest, nicest 50mm lens and it wouldn't have been right. So use the right equipment for the right job. And that kind of also comes back down to experience and knowledge from shooting. And to finalise this subject, I actually made a really fun video on TikTok throughout lockdown about the good old debate of size matters when it comes to filming. And I'm just going to show you guys now just for a little bit of fun. I got you. mentioned that before all my shoots even if they're low end budget and um, I will pre-plan them so I'll write a storyboard or a shot list and a little tip I want to give you guys to how I do this is I normally will pick out the track that I want to use for the video beforehand and then I literally all I do <laughs> is I play the music I close my eyes and I visualize how I want the production to look um, and the final video and it really helps me kind of get into the zone and then from there I'll just write out my shot list or my storyboard it means I've already got the soundtrack before filming which means when it goes into post it's super quick and easy to edit And like I mentioned before about writing down my storyboards or shot lists, whenever I go on to a shoot, I always shoot with the edit in mind. So along with the pre-planning, this is so important. It means that you have an idea of the shots you already want to do, and it means that when you move on to the editing phase, it's super easy. It's literally just drag and drop every single shot that you've already planned onto the editing. And then it means when you're on set, you can also play around a little bit with some extra shots once you have the time. So it's super important to develop a keen eye for spotting things that maybe shouldn't be in the frame. It also means that you are spending more time on set, perfecting your craft. It will take so much more time in the edit to kind of fix things that you probably could have just fixed on set. For example, trying to remove a water bottle from a scene. Now don't get me wrong, there will be fat times where you miss out things and you mess up a little bit and you have to fix it in post. But shooting with the best intentions is always good. Leaving it in shot just because you're lazy isn't the best way to do things. So just keep your eye out, see if you can spot anything. And for me, when I'm looking through the camera and I'm looking at what is in frame, I always think, why is it in frame? And, and whatever is in frame, does it need to be in frame? So you can have anything going on outside, but everything that's in shot, should it be in shot? And is it in shot correctly? <laughs> So another tip is being prepared to be able to adapt on set. So as I know I'm a videographer and I tell everyone that all the time, but when I'm on set, there are also times where I am like a lighting, a technician, a gaffer, set design. I've even been a makeup artist in the past and there's so many different aspects that go into production and you need to kind of be aware of this so that you can learn what everyone else's role are and then you can also help out when you need to.
So lastly, I just want to touch upon communication. Of course, I've mentioned it in the past about communicating with the client and it's super important. But when you're on set, it's also really important to communicate with the crew, with the talent and anyone else that's on set. Obviously, don't be rude when you're communicating. Do it with a smile. And if you're a little bit nervous, that's fine. But just fake it till you can make it. And if you've already done the pre-production and all the planning and you have all your talent on set and everything's going smoothly, there's no reason why you shouldn't feel confident. You are more than capable of achieving amazing results. Sometimes you just need a little bit of a nudge or someone to tell you you can do it. But trust me, if I can direct people, and I do get a little bit nervous at times, so can you. So if you want to check out the Panasonic cameras, they're all on the Wex Photography website, including this one, uh, the Panasonic S1H, which I'm actually filming this entire thing on, including right now. And if you want to connect with me, you can do so on my socials, at Jenny Alice Films. Tweet me, let me know what you thought about today, or message me on Instagram. I also have TikTok, Facebook, everything else. So yeah, please connect with me, reach out, let me know what you thought. Um, and if you do want to check out another Wex Masterclass, I highly recommend Russell's, which is this Friday. And lastly, don't forget to hashtag Wex Supplier on Instagram when you're uploading all your content. It just may give you a little bit of extra exposure if they do repost your content. So again, thank you guys so much for watching this Wex Masterclass. I really hope you guys got something useful out of it. And hopefully I'll see you guys again in the future.